Alright, it's time to go back to the Apocalypse Striker. The Apocalypse Striker is known as the King of PvE, the King of Mission Running. And with the implants you can actually improve uh, that capability a lot. And today I will go and take a look at the Apocalypse Striker with How are the you feeling, laser implant. Pilot? With both the Focused Crystal and the Pulse Crystal. Now, I've heard that you can develop some really ridiculous DPS with this ship, and I would guess that's true. Now, the stats on the Apocalypse Striker are generally the same. This hasn't been changed since April. Basically, uh, the Apocalypse will, will get a bonus on damage, laser damage, laser optimal range, and laser tracking speed, and you get a bonus on scan resolution. Overall, really solid, can also be used for PvP without a problem. My Apocalypse Striker is mostly a PvP ship. The rest of the stats on the ship are also the same, hasn't been changed at all. The Apocalypse is a armor tank, although I have seen some shield tank Apocalypse strikers. Personally, I prefer the ship as an armor tank. The capacitor on the Apocalypse striker is probably one of the weaker sides of the ship, because lasers do use a lot of capacitor, and with one of the implants you uh, actually increase capacitor usage for extra laser damage. Now, I mostly used this ship with pulse lasers, although I also use the Apocalypse Tracker with beam lasers. Both work. The beam lasers are excellent for sniping and excellent if you like to go AFK. The pulse lasers have faster clear times, but you have to be more active when, uh, when playing. A 100 km optimal range, which is really nice with the beam lasers. The rest of the modules is built to be able to defeat a tackle ship, also uh, built to have extra range. Now as for the rigs, I will have to change the rigs a little bit. Basically I want to have triple uh, burst aerator rigs. No rig integrations are necessary on the apocalypse. Basically I run the classic rigs on most battleships, including the Macariel and other battleships that I use for PvP. Now, with triple aerators, you can actually increase the DPS by a little bit. The rest of the tank is, of course, is of course the same as with any other uh, sniper ship. No tank at the moment, although you can make a tanky apocalypse striker. They actually work really nice, but. For strikers, I personally like to go full range or full DPS. Now, the pulse crystal. The pulse crystal will increase capacitor usage, but it will, it will increase the DPS by 75%. Which is, I would say, uh, really nice. Uh, this is a permanent buff once the implant is engaged. And uh, the DPS will last until you turn off the implant. The General units are focused on maximum DPS. The secondary attributes are also focused basically on DPS, but sometimes uh, they are focused on extra capacitor. Also important to uh, have tracking general units. Let me just quickly check if I already have them equipped. I think I do. I have them equipped, okay. And of course you can't uh, duplicate the units. Or, if you could replicate them, you would see all heatsink units on this implant, and I would have around 50,000 DPS, but that would be ridiculous and broken, so uh, that's obviously not going to happen. And the last level 45 buff will give you extra capacitor in exchange for shield. Okay, now let's take a look at the beam laser performance. Now initially I thought that they have patched uh, that you can't shoot at the station in order to uh, in order to gain the implant power, but I guess you can shoot at the station. Or not, because I don't see the implant charging. Okay, that's interesting. Three point two thousand DPS. Not bad. Damaged. It's solid. Oh, of course it doesn't work. I forgot to turn on the implant. Well, that's interesting. This reverse power buff works good if 
you are an armor tank. If you are a shield tank, then this implant will not uh, work very well. 5.7 thousand DPS, which looks nice. Of course, I can turn on the heat sinks and that will increase the DPS a lot. Now, of course, as the capacitor goes down, then the DPS will also go down because you, because it depends, the DPS depends on your capacitor level. The higher the capacitor, the higher the DPS. Maximum is 75% and 100%. And that means it's important to, uh, to have capacitor batteries on this ship in order to ensure that you have maximum possible DPS for longer periods of time. And that's why the focused crystal implant seems to be preferred over this one. With the focused crystal you have to make sure that you hit the target constantly. If you miss the target then your DPS also goes away. 7.4 thousand DPS with dual heat sinks active. And honestly that's not bad, that's, that's pretty solid. Okay, now let me dock and let me change a couple things and then I will go and perform this test Docking again request with accepted. The changed implant, swapping to the focus crystal. Now the focus crystal was nerfed by 10% I believe in the last patch and I can tell you that the focus crystal will be nerfed even more as time goes on, all the implants will be nerfed as time goes on. Now it's 1.8% per hit, it used to be 2%. Now it doesn't mean a lot on paper, uh, but with time, with more nerfs, the damage reduction will be quite noticeable. And I would guess that the nerfing will stop at around maybe 1 or maybe 0.5% per hit. That's my estimate, but again, uh, we will see what will happen as the updates go on. As with the previous implant, this also is focused on basically maximum possible DPS. And with this implant, I would probably assume that I will get around perhaps 11,000, 12,000 DPS. That's, that's my guess, because technically I should get 180% when it's fully charged. So, uh, we will see. My friend told me that their Apocalypse Tiger has around 17,000 DPS. So I, I guess I would be around that number, but we will see what will happen. 2,199 DPS? 2,191.90 DPS, oh, okay. All right, well, let's lock on the station. Let's charge up the implant. And let's keep on shooting. Now the DPS with this implant will go up as I keep shooting or not because uh, what just happened? I think I messed up with the timing and yeah, it's 0%. It does not go up. So uh, perhaps, perhaps I can't charge this implant by shooting at the station. Now, it would be very funny if uh, they actually patched that, because I already showed how it works. So perhaps it got patched, but in any case, there is a different trick that you can use. You can shoot a cargo container, and that should technically charge up the implant. We will find out that really quickly, and in a couple moments. Although my internet is not the best, as you can see, it takes a decade to lock on that container. Okay, finally. And it works. Alright, now it's slowly getting charged. 7%. Okay. The DPS will be increased with each successful hit. And now let's charge that to 180%. DPS is 3.4 thousand. Okay. With every... With every hit, the DPS will go up a little bit. Maximum possible is 180%. It used to be 200%, but I guess that got nerfed as well. 
Now it's 5361.49 DPS at 80%. At 130, 6869.41. It is slowly going towards 180. It takes a while to charge, but keep in mind if you miss the target, it will be reset to zero and you'll have to start from basically zero, which means you will lose all the DPS if you miss. So it's a little bit tricky to use this. It's good for PvE, can be tricky for PvP. Especially if you miss the target. 8.3 thousand. Okay. And now with one heatsink, the DPS is 10,296.41. And with dual heatsinks, the DPS is 12,267.31. Uh, 12, I was actually really close. Or no, I actually nailed it. I, I said around 11 or 12,000 DPS with the beam lasers. Okay. 212 km range with one and with dual track computers 287 km optimal range with the large beam lasers that's a that's a lot of range wow i'm actually surprised 287 km range with the beam lasers on this apocalypse strike that is a little bit scary and the tracking is actually not that bad if i disable the siege mode then the tracking goes goes up a lot and and yes uh, the apocalypse can hit a fast moving target from that range with 12,000 dps that's very nice should be really interesting okay now i swap to the pulse lasers and of course the dps will go slightly up although the range and capacitor usage will go down the Apocalypse Striker has capacitor problems with the beam lasers, but with the pulse lasers it should not be a big problem. And now I have quad heat sinks, because why not? Let's go with the classic PvE build on this ship. You can technically use this at 70 km and not take any damage in a encounter mission. However, in a storyline mission I wouldn't be using a build like this. I will actually go and make a new series where I will go and uh, run storyline missions with all of these different ships just to show you how they work and how to run the storyline missions without actually uh, encountering a problem with uh, other pirates. So let's shoot at the cargo container and let's see what the maximum possible DPS with this thing will be. So uh, we'll slowly charge to 180%. 6.6 thousand DPS, okay. We'll just wait for the implant to slowly charge itself to 100% to 180% map or this 9,666.7 DPS. 180 and now it's 11,606.76 DPS with one heat sink. We have 14,000 DPS with dual heat sinks, we have 16,000 DPS with triple heat sinks, we have 18,000 DPS, and with the fourth heat sink, we have 19,967.38 DPS. Well, I was actually really close to the 20,000 DPS mark. This is basically the DPS that uh, you can get on this thing with pull status and that's a lot of DPS but keep in mind if you miss then it will be reset back to zero and you will lose all that all that DPS don't get me wrong this is still ridiculously broken and it needs to be nerfed and it will be nerfed with time like I said uh, the first was 10% the next 10% will be 20% and and so on into the future and I would guess that they will stop at uh, around 1 or 0.5% per hit. Now with the other implant, 7979.65 VPS with the pulse crystal. And it is not bad. Overall, shield damage. Pretty solid. Although the heat sinks are on cooldown, but overall, 
This is the cold VPS that you will get on the Apocalypse Striker using the Pulse Crystal. With one heatsink, the DPS is 9,786. With dual heatsinks, the DPS is 11,735. With triple heatsinks, the DPS is almost 13,000. And with the last one, the DPS is 13,776.63, which is a little bit lower than the Focus Crystal, but uh, you have this DPS permanently, and even if you miss the target, you will still have uh, this DPS. Basically, as long as you keep the capacitor up and running, you will have the implants maximum possible DPS up and running. So let's take a look at how this works in missions. Now this mission is a special one. I think uh, this is one of those missions where we have to collect the boxes that can drop the tier 4 rig material or, or stuff like that. But overall, um, a quite difficult mission. And back when we do when we did a mission like this, we did use Quad Apocalypse Strikers was actually a really nice experience. For PvP it can be used, but you have no tank. So any ship that has a solid tank will be able to survive uh, this DPS. It is very important that if you are running PvP in NoSec, uh, in a carrier or you know battleship, dreadnought ships like that, in NoSec it's important to have a tank. Having high DPS is nice and all that, detected. but having a tank is We're under attack. a lot more important. Now my apologies if I sound a little bit distracted here. Uh, there is a revelation at our gate in our We're home system. Attack. So, uh, yeah. Now let me just quickly notify my corp and I can quickly go back to the video. Okay, so the implant is charging slowly, almost at almost at around 200%, 151%. And if you go and focus on the small ship, I recommend that you go and turn off the siege mode. You don't want to ac accidentally miss the target. Now shooting at the small targets is is okay. It actually works uh, really well with the long range build on the Apocalypse Striker. However, sometimes it does happen that it missed. So uh, I you will see me losing the implant charge quite often because I shot at the small ship uh, without using without disabling the siege mode after all it does impact the tracking a lot and I missed and of course the implant goes back to zero if you miss you lose the implant buff so now I have to go and recharge the, the implant by shooting at the ships and of course I lost the DPS, I lost the alpha damage, and that can impact the clear time quite a bit. Now for PvP you would definitely you would definitely miss targets uh, a lot more often. And I would say for PvP the pulse laser is actually uh, a lot more useful unless you're shooting at a citadel or a target that will be there for a very long time. The Pulse Crystal will give you basically 75% damage boost immediately and it's there to stay. With the Focus Crystal you have to shoot at the targets for a very long period of time. And that might be a problem. However, in missions that works flawlessly. Enemy 
Okay, the next wave has spawned. I like the fact that we have a revelation attack. in our home system. Neutral revelation, which is funny. Not every day that you see something like that. I don't mind. I honestly have no problems with that. I find it personally We're under really attack. funny. So I have to be at two places at the same time recording the video and of course trying to develop a tactic. You will see that video very soon probably. Should be very fun. Okay, the next wave has spawned. No, I'm not someone who does PvE a lot. I usually run missions. I usually run PvP. I don't do missions a lot, I only do missions when I have to test out something, like like right now. And it's a fact, it's actually, uh, I like to joke around, I like to joke around uh, saying that I fall asleep while running missions. It, it's true, it, that's based on a true story by the way, that is based on a true story. Running the the PV emissions, half of our fleet did fall asleep because we just don't do PVP PVE that often. We don't do missions that often. It's not something that that we do. However. Missions are a very important aspect of the of the game. Of players, new missions to to make a lot of risk, and that's okay. I don't mind that. I would love to to do missions, but again, I would probably fall asleep and lose my ship. Now I haven't lost a ship by falling asleep yet. However, however, I did lose the first faction cruiser in a mission because of bad internet. At the time faction cruisers were considered super expensive and of course and of course I had to I had to lose it. But it's okay. It was our only only 4.4 billion phantasm. Now this mission has five, has five web, uh, has five waves, not five webs, five only five waves, and it should not be a big problem. Let me now approach. Implant running at full power. Overall, the PvE experience with the Apocalypse Tiger is, I think, one of the best ones. However, I personally use the Macario for, for this job, mostly because the Macario has a lot more DPS and because I have better, We're under attack. better skills for the Macario. I did work at improving the, the the DPS on the on the Macarial and with Barrage I, I think I'm getting around 15,000 DPS at the moment something along those 
Something along those lines. Okay, let me focus on... I, I like the fact that I can one-hit the... I, I can kill the cruisers in basically one hit. Just have to make sure that I don't miss the target and I should be good. If I miss the target, then I will be doing a lot less DPS and the clear time will be reduced a lot. In high sec missions, the most important aspect is the clear time. Basically, you want to have a very fast clear time. The Apocalypse Striker does and does do that really well. And in that aspect, this ship is practically the best. Now, if they change missions, and I think at one point they will, then the Apocalypse Striker might actually be replaced with other ships because currently the only reason why this ship is so good is because the missions favor ships with long range. And this is where the Apocalypse Striker will, uh, will shine. But if they decide to go and change the missions a little bit, then... then the Apocalypse Tracker might actually be dethroned as the best PvE issue. Because other ships have uh, their own their own perks, their own advantage over this one. For example, if you if you catch a Sniper Apocalypse, it's basically that. There is very little that they can do to defend themselves against a close-range tackle. While other ships are definitely a lot more difficult to, to engage. The Macario can be very, very dangerous to tackle because that thing has some really scary tracking, and uh, the Macario also has scary range with all hands. I learned that while flying the Ortus. I personally don't like to tackle Macarials with the Ortus. Nowadays, I just drop my own Macario on the Macario, so I just delete that with the barrage implant. But back before I was flying battleships. I use the Ortus or Ashmo against a Macarial and yeah, they can be They can be very very scary ships to engage. As for the Apocalypse, well if the Apocalypse can lock you at long range you are dead. Apocalypse with pulse lasers can be dangerous, but at close range, you can easily outperform the laser tracking, so the Apocalypse will not be able to hit you. So basically, every ship has its own advantage and disadvantage. The most important aspect is player skill and player experience. And slowly I am finishing up with this mission. Now the implant, as you can see here, does work really well. And overall, for missions, the focused crystal will be very useful. Definitely a lot more useful than the barrage implant for missions. Because the barrage implant is effective against only one target, while this implant is effective against all targets, as long as you keep on hitting the target. So, that would be basically uh, how this works on the Apocalypse. I'm pretty sure it also works really well on the Balgorn and on the other laser ships, although they have lower DPS than the Apocalypse Striker. And the other ships are mostly used for PvP, although the PvE Balgorn exists and it's also very interesting. It's also a very interesting idea that uh, I want to... I 
want to try out at one point. Well then, um, I guess that would be it for the Apocalypse Striker. Overall, I really like this ship. I haven't been flying it that often lately, but uh, I plan to. Perhaps I also plan to fly the other Striker battleships because I want to try out something new. And perhaps I will also try and fly other interesting ships. And of course, I really, I still hope that we get uh, new ships, totally new ships that are going to be uh, unique and fun to fly. So with that being said, hope that you enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.